Who here hasn't been to space? Why? <laughs> you better not throw up on my ship. Approaching jump in three, two, one. And the first thing we're going to get into is going to be Blake. So I don't know if everybody saw or not, but the Hollywood Reporter was talking about how uh, Blade had found its uh, director and it's Lovecraft Country. If he, I didn't watch Lovecraft Country, but I heard, you know, I haven't seen it either. when it came, I remember when it came out, everybody was saying nothing but positive things about it online, uh, especially on Facebook. The people on Facebook were like, oh my God, you got to watch Lovecraft Country and this and this and that, blah, blah, blah. Um, Jonathan Majors, I know, starred in Lovecraft craft country oh, with it's got great reviews yeah, yeah it's got great audience reviews, reviews is yeah, 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 yeah 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 about. yeah like, wow the audience reviews are great uh, mm -hmm. um well and two i'm mean, even seeing here like it was it wasn't just nailed down as a as a horror no it was, it was, was like sci-fi there was sci-fi there was love for yeah. a man so yeah like, it was i mean I, I remember people saying at one point like like at first i thought it was like a a a uh a slavery type depiction show that's what i thought it was good I, I didn't watch it just judging from i've only seen the poster so please don't judge me <laughs> so just from looking at the poster the both both yeah. of them i'm thinking okay this is like what is this like but then people were talking on facebook talking about well aliens and monsters or something I'm like what the fuck is going well, on in this show well, when they say lovecraft you gotta think like it's lovecrafty and it's call of cthulhu shit up in here is what i would be thinking i guess i mean i don't H. know hp lovecraft you know who that is? No, no. Oh, yeah, he's an author that created, like, Cthulhu and tons of monsters and Lovecraftian horror. Like, the entire genre oh, of Lovecraftian horror was mm. named after him. And granted, he was kind of a racist and a real piece of shit, but also... Oh, that could be a Also, them's the, them's the times, too. It's not like everyone back in that time was exactly friendly to anyone of a different skin color, but... <laughs> J-Rob said they killed all the men in Lovecraft Country, too. <laughs> um, well... Uh, Lovecraft Country's um, director is going to be, uh, if I'm saying this right, it's Jan Demange. Demange? I believe that's how I'm saying it. I believe I'm saying it right. Y'all know in the chat I'm terrible with names. Mm -hmm. But Jan is going to be helming this. And from the looks of it, from things that we've also heard, it's going to be rated R. Now, here's the rated R thing. I need to hear that from Marvel Studios first. Now, I know, I, I don't know if the, if the uh, uh, reporter commented on that or not actually i have that here i don't know if they reported on that or not they did go on to say uh jan damage if i'm saying that correctly who directed the pilot of hbo's boundary pushing horror series lovecraft country has come aboard to helm the vampire action thriller that still has mahershala ali attached us to the star you see how they had to put the still has mahershala ali you know all the drama going over there with blade mm -hmm. uh then it said meanwhile uh michael starberry who earned an emmy nomination for opening the episode of ava yeah. Terrible names, man. Um, yeah, drama. Uh, when They See Us has been hired to pin a brand new script for the feature. The new team up puts the project back on track for after losing its original director, Basman Tariq, um, in September. The partnering, or I'm sorry, the parting of ways was due to creative differences and occurring suddenly as project was in pre production and heading towards the November production start in Atlanta. Oh, when They See Us, that's the person that wrote the episode of Part 5. Um, Shit. so yeah, I, I, I'm skimming this and I don't see the reporter saying anything about rated R. So as of now, the rated R thing mm -hmm. is a rumor, I'm going to say. And with that being a rumor, again, I'm going to have to hear Marvel Studios tell me themselves that this is rated R because according to President Kevin Feige, uh, Deadpool was it. Deadpool was going to be the only installment of anything rated R that they were doing. Yeah, you got your TVMAs, but that's not rated R. So, and their version of a TVMA, is right? So light. Right. So uh, I, I, I'm wondering if this is truly going to be rated R. And I, I from day one said mm -hmm. the only way you can accurately portray a Blade story, it has to be rated R. I don't know how you do it any other way but rated R. Right. I mean, and, yeah, and I mean, look at go look at the the, the Blade trilogy that. I don't know anyone who didn't like that trilogy. It right. was fucking awesome, right. right? It was all rated R. But it wasn't guts and gore and hardcore, you know. It was not over the top. Right. But it's just right. that standard, standard what was necessary to make the film work. But it was great. I'm sorry, but the iconic scene where um, Ryan Reynolds the opening? busts oh, in the, the hello, scene. my name is <laughs> fuck you. Bro, I'll never forget. I mean, it, they were great I, movies. I love the, the underground yeah club scene yeah when he's just in there and surrounded 
Right. Like, yeah. That, that's what I need to see. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, Those that's are things what I'm saying I need is, to is see. You look at. I, I just with bringing in any of these characters that are definitely rated are necessary characters, right? It's just like. Why is the, I? I guess it's the branding. What the fuck ever. But Disney is so hesitant, and it makes me less interested in. Until I know you can do it, any character that should fall in that category, I am automatically going to think you're going to fuck this up, because you are not willing to take it where it needs to go. And that's why, with them getting into street characters, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to get in there at some point. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that you know, like you said, the underground. Yeah. Especially with Blade, he's a guy walking around with a sword and guns, you know. I mean, right. Well, vampires, you, you, you have to have yeah. right. you have to have some kind of gore in there. Yeah. And like with the trilogy, like I said, it's not there wasn't anything over the top, but it was it was just enough to be necessary. It's it was not that like sweet spot. It's yeah, it's not like saw gore right. you're seeing everybody you know. Right. 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 Well and it's right. it's just like man. They have to be able to nail these things. They have to be able to take it and, and talk about... You know, You mentioned the street characters, right? So unless we're going with these overly cheesy, like, like full of machismo villains, hey, miss, let me see your purse over there. You get into some dark shit with the... Like, I always go to, in my opinion, one of the greatest comic books of all time, uh, American comic books, which would be The Watchmen, right? Some of the shit they had to deal... Like, Rorschach dealt with the dirty the messed up, the you cannibalized little children, you did this and that, right? Yeah. Compelling, like, dark stories. <laughs> Why some of these street heroes are kind of really edgy. Right. And they're like, you don't understand the things I've seen. Like, those are real stories. Real bad things happen. Yeah. And y are you gonna, if you're gonna bring in the nitty gritty character, have the nitty gritty stories. If you're, all, if you're gonna half ass it, just don't do it. I'd prefer if you didn't. And instead, since you have the rights to Blade, sell him to a company that will make a standalone Blade again so I can see some dope fucking movies. Or sell all of the... Or at least, like, lease, kind of like Sony's partnership, right? Like Sony's doing. Partner all of your R-rated content to a different company. Well, here's what i Because I'll you're say. just going to waste my fucking time and it's going to be annoying. Uh, I'm, I'll say this. And this is... Uh, well, before we move into that topic but it's not, we're not going to move into it right now i'm kind of saving it but iger's back <laughs> okay so save it, save I, it. I, i'm just like because that get that all that does for me is give me copium it gives me a little bit of hope but it doesn't oh it gives me major i have been saying yeah. i've been saying when everybody was pointing their frustrations at kevin feige your frustrations were always pointed in the wrong direction Go it higher. was always JPEG. Right. This is a... Anyway, I'll get into we'll it. We'll get into it, yes. So, yeah, uh, I, I am excited if it is truly rated. I mean, I'm still excited for the Blade film. I want to see what Mahershala Ali does. But I hope that the rumor, the plot leak or whatever that had come out... I don't think it was a plot leak. I think it was a rumor that had come out about uh, the daughter being heavily pushed in instead of Blade... Um, her being the spotlight and then taking or whatever it was going to be. I don't really know. I just know that they had put, I saw that, mm -hmm. saw that it was going to push the daughter and I stopped reading. Because I was like, I no, no, bro, no, no. Yeah. If we're getting a Blade film, I want it to be Blade. I don't want it to be his daughter who we just found about like a few years ago. Yeah. Like, didn't she get introduced into Marvel Comics like just a few years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so no, I don't, I don't, no thanks. Not well, see, and that's where, that is where the argument comes into play between misogyny and just wanting your fucking character, right? Because, again, you can uplift... Or it's, it's the... Okay, the better way I should phrase this is the addition and subtraction argument, right? You can have great female heroes. You can have great male heroes. You can have them both coinciding at the same time, right? You don't need to take away heroes to give heroes. You don't right. need to take away male characters to give right, female characters. Right, it's, right, right. This isn't a fucking... Like, it, the scales don't have to balance in such a way and... I mean, the only thing that I give this movie that I'm excited about is Mahersh Mali himself. Because he saw that, that, what, two fight scene script? Mm. Was it two or three fight two scenes? Two fight yeah. scenes, 90 page script. Yeah, and he saw that and he went, uh, fuck, I will, I will go down, I will tear the ship down. As he should. I will poke holes all in the bottom of this ship and we will sink before I let you do this shit to me or my character, right? Right. And that is what you need. Should. That is the dedication that you need. And so he is the saving grace to this film. He is what makes me excited to see it. And I'm so glad he didn't walk. 
I'm so yeah. glad he didn't walk. Because they would have just replaced him and kept the same on, fucking He could have walked. Mm-hmm. You know, he could have, yeah. bro. Yeah. Like, you know, well, no, 90 you pages, have a I'm an stance. Emmy winner and actor, and you're right. giving me a 90-page two-fight scene and yeah. Tom Holland. And it's Blade. J- j- yeah. right. And it's Blade. No, right. uh, regardless, like, Tom Holland, it's Blade. Right, no, exactly. And, like, I mean, names. in that moment, yeah, he could have walked, but I just think it, I would have done the same thing where when you're not... <laughs> When you're not wrong, when you're coming from a place of like, no, dude, listen, this is wrong, and you stay, you know, you stick to your guns. Here's what we get: they're mm-hmm. responding, they're understanding, which blows my mind. That well, I wonder I think, if Feige this, had even read the fucking script. This yet. is this <laughs> is what I don't think so. But because this is what you know, this, this is, is what great, I think right? too. You know, yeah, like they're listening and this and this and that. But also at that moment, were they listening? And I'm I'm, I'm just kind of playing devil angel on the shoulder here. Mm-hmm. Were they listening? Because think about it. You already got you already let it get out that you had a ninety page script, two lack or two fights, two lackluster fight scenes. What if Mahershala would have walked? That would have been bad for Marvel. Yeah. To for that out to get out there to say that yeah. Emmy Award winning Mahershala Ali walks away from Marvel because he's frustrated with things behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. That's not a good look. No. So then what do you do? You bend the fucking knee. Yeah. You bend the knee. So I don't know. Was it one of those things where they were like... Well, and a beautiful thing about this too is it's not just Mahershma Ali. It's not just him having the power that he has. It is understanding that fandom has voice through the internet, right? So him alone with his power, but also going, hey, everyone, look what the fuck they were trying to do. Then they're like, oh, no. Oh, you speak directly to our source of income. Right. That That is a great thing. And I will also, because I, I kind of want to bring this up, and it goes perfectly here, that was brought up in the Discord, and I've, I've seen it float around a lot, that the Nate Moore quote about they don't want to hire Marvel fans, comic fans, oh. to make their movies, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, my I argument to that is, is sure, you can say, hey, but, but, I mean, I mean it's, it's the point of knowing, at least understanding the source material, right? Because mm-hmm. when you get, I mean... Sure, they want you got to be able to be flexible, and it's constantly moving and changing, and doing whatever. But it's motherfuckers who've never seen anything Blade that make a, a movie with two fight scenes in it, and it's all about his daughter. That is what you get when you hire people who don't know what the fuck Blade is. You know what I'm saying? That's why they brought DeMeo on, bro. Because yeah. you know the writers were even the writing for the script was bad. So they had to bring, I mean, that's what, I'm sitting here reading Collider's article, but them bringing on DeMeo, mm-hmm. as we've talked about before, you know, DeMeo was, uh, Bo DeMeo, rather, Bo was, um, he writes for X-Men 97. He's, you know, he, he's going to, he's one of the writers for X-Men 97. X-Men 97 is already greenlit for season two. They're already writing season two. So in order for them to greenlight a season two, they must really love the fucking script that was delivered for mm-hmm. season one. So if that was what that was, you look at what he... And he's already a big Marvel comic nerd anyway. So you bring him on to a Blade film. He's a black writer. You got a black director. This is what I wanted, though, from the beginning. I, I've always said this. I would like for our people handling our people's characters. That's just me. Because yeah. why? Culturally, you see the things that need to be done. Like, if a black writer is writing a black hero... You can expect it to be on par. I would hope. You can expect it to be like look at look at Falcon and Winter Soldier. The, the the writers I forget director's name. Help me, chat. The director's name. I think they were black. They were. Uh, and that's why you got some of those scenes that were actually good scenes mm-hmm. with uh, that played on 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 cultural with Ray, with Sam and things like that. Um, that's what I mean when I say the writing and things like that. I, I would like to see, like, having DeMeo on this, knowing that he delivered with whatever season one of 97 is going to be, knowing that he's a big Marvel fan, knowing he was also on The Witcher and how he felt about how some of the uh, mm-hmm. writers didn't know the material, he talked about that. So right. obviously he's a, he's a, he's, he cares. Right. He does his homework. I'm, I'm happy. Right, and I, I begin to wonder, watching some of these... And watching the the way Phase Four is gone, movie wise, the things we could, especially it, it's when you relate the things we could have gotten and didn't get, is really what I'm getting at here. I'm beginning to wonder if a large issue has been half.
half-assedness of the writers they bring in. They think, oh, well, it's of the Marvel genre, cinematic universe. It is with established, well-known characters. <clears throat> they will carry this movie for us, and we can kind of relax a little bit. Because, I mean, that seems to be a large part of the problem is... is solid writing where we could have got more we could have got better we could have got but you didn't push your because because in superheroes in comics there's a lot of really compelling stories there's a lot of really intricate detailed stories that are emotional that are they invoke a lot of emotion but yep. some of these movies or tv shows kind of tend to be cookie cutter right. in the sense of nothing really like was out of left field for me or i didn't expect to and don't get me wrong, I don't expect every writer to be like a... You mentioned the whole you would like a person of color writing a person of color, right? Mm. That makes sense, because I can't write from a person of color's perspective. And there uh. are few people that, like, the top echelon... Like, I am I watched an interview today with uh, Quentin Tarantino about when he does write a character... If he's writing a character, like a black character, he's writing a black guy, right? And he's like, I have an actor in mind who plays this. Generally, he nails it, but we're talking top... 1% of writing directors in the world. Everyone, I mean, I just, everyone else, though, I do think they need to specialize writers. What do you know? What are you trying to do? Because they seem to just I think be missing just give the ball. A damn. I think that's what it is. Really, just give a damn. I mean, obviously, well, they, they gave a damn with Miss Marvel. Tighten the, tighten the ranks. The corniness. I, I'm yeah. so sick of the corniness. Agreed. In, in, in Marvel. I mean, we. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna go the whole night without mentioning Thor: Love and Thunder because we've been. Yeah. You, you know. But my biggest problem was that was with okay, so you know how they have like the little not to get off topic, but this goes with the writing, right? Mm -hmm. So they have the scene with Matt Damon and whoever else, and they're like they're acting out, um, like stuff that has happened, like Loki's death and everything like that. And there's Loki sitting there watching, and Thor pulls up and he sees it. You know, I felt like the whole time, that's how, that's how the movie was. Like I thought, like it was like the parody that Matt Damon and that other actor were playing, like, I felt like that's how the whole movie, I was like, when are they going to actually start, no. start acting? And, 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 and when is like the, this is a story about the God butcher. Right. Why, why did he, you, you know, yeah. but anyway, well, not, no, though, not that, to go off on, on no, that's you know. perfect though, because that's the best example of whenever he goes to see the God in the beginning. The, the god he's worshipping and oh my daughter is is whatever, right? Yeah. He is doing a killer job acting a well-written script and then the god took me out of it. How goofy and just like yeah. silly cartoon writing that motherfucker was. I was like, man, you could tell a great story about a, a god that just doesn't give a fuck about you, right? That is so much, I'm so much grander than you peasant pee. You know, but make it like compelling. <laughs> And instead, they made it like fart joke slapstick, like yeah, some bullshit. And I'm like, that's not what are you doing? I, I didn't take the movie seriously at all for somebody who was going around and and killing gods. You know, it, it just yeah. wasn't. Yeah. And even the scene with Zeus in there, but anyway. we're having an orgy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not invited. Yeah, there's there's some there's some things that uh, obviously what Phase Four was, but um, mm -hmm. you know we'll get to that. Our but we are seeing a lot of developments that are making us think these might be a lot better. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, you know, as always, question is for you guys. Let us know down below in the comments what you guys are thinking. What do you think of uh, Blade, the Blade director, and what are you thinking? Is it going to be rated R, the rumor with it being rated R? Because it's not official right now. The rumor with it being rated R, and what are you thinking about uh, the writing that is going to be going on, you know, from DeMeo? Are you hopeful in DeMeo or are you going to be hopeful in Jan Dimage if I'm saying that correctly and obviously we got Mahershala that is uh, got his heavy input so let us know what you guys are talking about.